Hey, are you finding yourself languishing in the dog days of summer, the long dog days of summer? Have you found yourself off track? Are you starting to drift? Today's episode is for you. We're gonna talk about how to infuse energy into your life. I'm gonna talk about Ed Milet's book, The Power of One More, and some other books that I like to get going, to get back on track, to create energy and to bring momentum back into your life. Let's go, today's episode is for you. Welcome to Stories from the River, a show in which we go behind the scenes at Broad River Retail. Okay guys, welcome back to Stories from the River. I hope everyone is having a wonderful summer and enjoying your your time uh, in the sun or on vacation in the mountains, wherever you're going to either stay cool or enjoy the fun in the sun uh, this summer. This is Charlie Maloof, your host. I'm bringing you a solo episode from Stories from the River. Why solo? Well, that's just because. Uh, hopefully you just liked our last, you liked our last series, which was with Coda Bennett, home furnishings expert and sales manager here at the River. You know, he, he'd been with us for four years and we got a two-part interview with him that we just completed last week. And uh, so I've got a lot of questions about the Coda episode, like, hey, what happened to the video? And, uh, you, you know, these... These things happen in life, uh, and sometimes you just the show must go on. So we lost the video, unfortunately, unintended consequence. We lost the video file, but we were able to salvage the audio and just had to make a judgment call. We tried to recover it, and the decision was, I, I thought the interview was so good that we really needed to let it run, and uh, or you know, Coda had driven in and we, I just did not want to ask him to come in and re-record. Uh, so we went ahead and published it as is, and, and hopefully you can enjoy what, and if you're on, you know, Apple or, or Spotify, or you're in the gym, you're driving around, you probably aren't watching the video anyway, and you're just listening in to it. So, and then before that, you know, Manny completed our founder scholarship fund series and, uh, with our, our founder scholarship recipients, and uh, yeah, this was the second time we did that series. I think we had six episodes and six great interviews there. And it's just one of the things that we do to give back to our memory makers and the children of our memory makers. Yeah, I'm recording this on July. What is today's day? It's in late July. It's July 24th. And I, I'm, I will be departing for Vegas Market. This is what we do twice a year. Uh, can't wait to go to 110 degree heat in uh, the desert here later today. So we're, we're on the cusp of uh, Vegas Market and we've got the Olympics coming up. And so I just wanted to bring you a couple episodes solo wise so that we don't miss a week and we don't miss any content. So you got me, you got me this week. And the you know, topic today is going to be about, you know, I've talked a lot about goals and standards. And so I want to talk about that today, you know, about goals and standards. And so I was listening to a podcast uh, the other day, I think it was on Saturday uh, from Ed Milet. And a lot of you know, I really like Ed Milet's book, The Power of One More. And, I, you know, I talk about, you know, he's got two chapters in there called One More Goal. It's, I think it's chapter uh, eight. Yeah, chapter nine. And then chapter 10 is One More Standard. And I really like the way that Ed positions goals. And I was reminded about this on his podcast I listened to on Saturday. And he really said goals are like energy. They give you energy. And I was just really reflecting on goals give you energy. You know, four years ago, I started a wellness goal. And I, I just, I, it really started as, you know, I was I was really overweight. And so we call this in our industry, the furniture body. So the furniture body got to me. Uh, and, and, and I was not exercising. And I was just being a dad, working too many hours. And we we're in the midst of COVID and something had to change, right? My health was going in, in the wrong direction. It was trending the wrong direction. And uh, I couldn't figure out why I weighed what I weighed. Yeah, right. So I, I had to set a, a goal for myself. And so I put this like really, really like crazy amount of weight that I wanted to lose, but, but seemingly unattainable. But what that stirred up in me was it created energy. And if you, I think if you set any goal for yourself, or for your company, if you're leading a company and you set a goal for your company, or or if you're leading a team and you and the goal is we want to go win the championship, you know we want to win our division, we want to win the title, you know, or if you want to win a trophy, what what have you, it does create energy. Now, I mean, you do have to kind of maintain healthy balance and approach to that, 
but I really like this concept of a goal creates energy. I want to read you from page 112 of his book. Ed says, I believe goals are energy. Goals are a life force. He says, the pursuit of your goals when properly executed is the transference of energy into action, creating one of the purest forms of one more in your life. I just... I love that. I mean, this whole chapter is just so marked up for me. I've got so many things like underlined and, and starred and written. Uh, and so I just, I'm going to continue with just a couple here excerpts. You know, the, that's because the mind always gravitates to what it is familiar with and draws in whatever resources are necessary to propel you forward. What you think leads to what you need. When you consciously access what you need, your mind sets about the business of making your goals a reality. I've heard people say before that once you set a goal, the universe conspires to help you achieve it. And so sometimes we're like, might feel a little bit sheepish or embarrassed to like state our goal or put our goal out there. Uh, or, or, you know, it's, there is a little bit of vulnerability and accountability to putting a goal out there. But, you know, uh, I've heard Damon John say, you know, Damon John from FUBU and Shark Tank, uh, you know, I've read some of his books and he says, you know, he, he would write his goal down and put it on his nightstand every night so he could look at it when he went to bed and when he woke up every morning. And so uh, Ed here on the next page writes, Ed Milet writes, what you're willing to tolerate becomes the standards you must implement. Standards are the actions linked to the thoughts you have related to your goals. Creating goals without creating corresponding standards is a waste of time. Think of your goals as the byproducts of your standards. Conversely, when you put the proper standards in place, you have a much better chance of achieving your goals. When you put the proper standards in place, you have a much better chance of achieving your goals. I'm going to get to standards in one second. And, and he goes, for goals to be meaningful, they must be difficult and challenging However, you can control your standards because they are internal and rest entirely on you and how much you're willing to invest. This whole deal about goals being energy and, and goals being a life force to me is so compelling. Goals are all about change. That's why your goals need to challenge you. If you, they aren't challenging, then they won't change you. And then he goes on to write, the more emotional you, you make your compelling reasons, the more energy and resiliency you will attach to it. So, I mean, you got momentum goals, stretch goals, shorter term goals with immediate payoffs, longer term goals with bigger payoffs. You know, regardless, you're going to see growth when you go pursue your goal, but it will create energy uh, in you. And so just think about that. Think about a goal that you've set and, and then the energy that it's uh, created in your to go get that goal. And so now let's talk about standards because I think they work in unison. And so what he said on this podcast that really resonated with me is he said standards are the delivery mechanism for achieving your goals. Standards are the delivery mechanism for achieving your goals. So four years ago, uh, you know, what I had set was this weight loss goal that I wanted to achieve to get healthier. And, and, and then I, and then I got this like kind of number of days in a row I wanted to kind of work out and, and, and that was also a, a standard that I held myself accountable to. If I could work out every day, that was my that was my standard. And I created another standard, which was a minimum number of miles per week that I was going to like either bike or run or walk. And it became 100 miles a week. And so that became my weekly standard. And it was tough at first, and then it just becomes the standard. So the standard is the accountability measure, the delivery mechanism for achieving your goals. The goals create the energy. And the standard is the, the accountability. They do work in unison. Uh, so this is what Ed writes in chapter 10. Ed Milet writes in chapter 10. I've got a mind-blowing revelation for you. There's a very high probability you're not going to reach your goals. But here's some great news. You're absolutely guaranteed to get your standards. They're inextricably linked together. And so just kind of think about that. That means if you want the best possible chance of reaching your goals, you need to adjust your standards and reaching your goals will become almost automatic. Goals start off as thoughts. And when you decide you want to achieve your goals, you create standards as a means of taking those thoughts and applying the actions to them. Think of standards as the performance benchmarks you're willing to tolerate. Standards are the actions that propel you toward your goals. Goals effectively become byproducts of how you approach your standards. Goals without standards are empty. Goals without standards are useless. But the secret is to constantly review and upgrade your standards. 
So that's it. You know, as you're starting in pursuit of your goals, kind of reflect on your standards. Give yourself some latitude, like, hey, you know, you might miss uh, something, but, but and that's okay. But to activate the changes meant for you, there must be a conscious decision to take only what you think is valuable and apply it in a thoughtful way to create your unique standards. So there's just so much here. Highly recommend this book. Standards are most valuable when they are precise is another thing that he writes. And goals without standards are just a bunch of rudderless thoughts and words. I love that statement. They're only unattached desires that will never materialize unless you pair them with the right standards. If you've created goals and fallen short, it's because your standards are not congruent with your goals. Here's something else that is truly liberating. When you set the right standards that match your goals, your life becomes much less stressful. That's next level thinking and a next level standard. It's also a championship standard. The difference is so subtle, but it separates the greatest of all time from the rest of the world. And this is what he's talking about, Coach Nick Saban. He says, we'll practice not until we get it right, but until we can't get it wrong. There's so much great stuff here about goals and standards and, and worthy goals and corresponding standards are not supposed to be easy to reach. So that's a lot about goals and standards. And I just want to read, I'm just going to read uh, just a couple more sentiments here. Uh, the I love this one because you've heard the statement, comparison is the thief of joy. The only person you should be comparing yourself to is you. It's you versus you. You versus yesterday's version of you or you versus the potential that you can become. You know, and, and I think people have amazing God-given talents, abilities, and potential. And so, you know, I, you've heard me say this phrase I re really, really like from Mark Batterson. And uh, let's see if I can remember it on the fly. Uh, it goes, our potential is God's gift to us. What we do with our potential is our gift back to God. And that comes from Mark Batterson, and that just resonates with me so much. And I think everyone has amazing God-given talents, abilities, and potential. Yes, it takes some discernment to figure out what those are, what your spiritual gifts are, and things of that nature. But then what are we going to do with them? Like, don't, don't waste your talents. Don't waste your gifts. They were given to you. And so how are you going to unlock them? And uh, this is the, what Ed says on page 137. He says, the consequences of higher standards. Changes create consequences. Setting higher standards creates consequences. When one more thinker set a higher standard, you'll experience consequences, good and bad. The good is obvious. When your goals are aligned with your higher standards, you'll enjoy a fuller and more blissful life. When you repeat this process in several areas of your life, you'll experience a powerful transformation. As you develop higher standards, you'll also enjoy more resilience you'll bounce back from setbacks quicker. Your higher standards will become habits and replace the lesser standards that used to guide you. Even if you don't fully succeed, you'll still fail at a higher level and land at a higher baseline. Okay, so that's goals and standards. And then what happens when you get off track? Well, let, let, I mean, let's say you know, you've achieved your goal and, and like, or you want to just take, you want to rest or like now it's no longer a goal. And, you know, I was reminded recently, Michael Hyatt wrote a book called The Vision Driven Leader, Leader. And he and his daughter have this full focus program and training program. And so I got an email from, from them one time. Uh, I'm sorry, just recently, uh, right around the time I was listening to this podcast from Ed Milet. And it says the number one reason you aren't living a life you love. And this one word, it's one word, it's called drift. Drift is the one word which is the number one reason you aren't living a life you love. And I was reminded with this quote that, that I've used of his that nobody ever drifts to a destination they would have chosen. Nobody ever drifts to a destination they would have chosen, which means you don't have a goal, you're just drifting, you're just floating. And when you allow your life to drift, it loses that energy, which I think Ed Milet talks about, which energy is a life force. And, and maybe you're just based off your standards, but the standards aren't in pursuit of any goal. You just become treading water. So let me read you what Michael Hyatt says from this full focus email. He goes, everyone wants a life that's meaningful and significant, but why do so many people fall short? One word, drift. With just a vague desire for a better life, without deciding what that means, it's easy to let the daily stresses and distractions push people away from a life they would have loved to experience. 
And what's the answer, they, he says in this email? A vision that provides the necessary direction that makes it possible to create a life of significance and meaning, a life plan. Okay, so I just, I just have been reflecting on goals, standards, and drift. And you have to, are you in pursuit of a goal? Is that giving you energy? Is it a meaningful goal? Does it give you emotion? Is it creating a life force for you? Is it challenging you? Is it changing you? Is it going to transform you? And then have you put the right standards in place to hold you accountable to achieve the goal? So there's not just a wish, you know, there's no, there's no, uh, you know, uh, uh, fairy godmother is going to come out and say, hey, what wish do you want to achieve? Have you put it in place to hold yourself accountable? And and then let's say that you've achieved that goal. Do you have you do you need to set a new goal? Or, or let's say you've forgotten that goal. Are you starting to drift? Nobody ever drifts to a destination they would have chosen. In other words, when you drift, you're not going to a place that you would have chosen. So when you're intentional about where you want to go, you can then set the goal. You've got the vision, you set the goal, you put in the standards, and then you can go achieve it. And so again, some of that is like what Stephen Covey used to talk about, begin with the end in mind. So when you begin with the goal, the end that you want to achieve and work backwards, now we can go pursue it. And so, and by the way, if you don't have a goal right now, Maybe you need to pray about a goal, reflect on a goal, think about a goal, ask others, seek a mentor. You know, what, hey, what should, goal should I have? And you might get some ideas and they may sound good to you or you may need, they may trigger a thought or a synapse that says, hmm, I don't want that, but I want this. And, you know, whether, again, whether it's for your family, whether it's for you personally for health, maybe it's for you uh, spiritually, maybe it's for, for you uh, on, on health and wellness, maybe, you know, just maybe for, it's for your career, you know, where, and, and by the way, it doesn't matter like where you are in life. You could be 65 years old and still set a life goal for where you want to be when you're 70 or 75, or, you know, you could, you could have children or grandkids, but you could still set goals for where you want for yourself or them, um, or for your spouse or your partner, whatever it may be, uh, or for your company. If you're leading a company or leading a team, uh, goals will create the energy, and so I'm being a little bit repetitive, but I just think it's so good to, to really reflect on goals are energy. Standards support the goals. They're the delivery mechanism to go achieve those goals. And if we don't have those, this word drift comes in. And are we drifting? And if we're drifting, maybe we need to kind of think back to a goal that's going to create energy in our lives and our companies and our families uh, and create that life force that, that helps us go after and pursue significance and meaning and something that we can look back on and be really proud of having achieved. So that was on my heart. That's something I wanted to share with you guys. And, you know, look, I'm really proud of what Broad River Retail has achieved. One of the goals I had in this podcast was I just wanted to start a podcast. It was a, it began as a passion project for uh, for me and for us at, at the beginning of 2022. And honestly, it took me way too long to get started on it. It was like, it just was this goal I had. And, uh, and I, I love podcasts. I listen to a lot of podcasts. And, and I was like, you know, what if we told the stories of our people? And I didn't know how to go about it. And I just started, I remember doing some research and looking up some companies. How does this begin? And, and sometimes you just kind of have to like take that first step. It took me way too long to take the first step. And here we are, and, I, and don't go back and listen to those first episodes. They're terrible. I don't think I was good as a host or good as a interviewer. And, 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 you know, but you get better. Like practice, you, you get a little bit better. And, and now we're nearly 200 episodes in. And, you know, instead of doing one per week, we're doing two per week. And our goals are growing. And our, and our, our, what we can, what we're thinking about doing with the podcast is growing. And so it just kind of, it, it grows, it spawns new ideas. And so it's, I think it's been additive to our company. And I think our company's had great goals. You know, uh, we, we've had some great success over the last few years. And, and now we're setting new goals for like where we want to be at 20 in the year 2030. So we've got a new five year plan that we want to, that's exciting that we want to enroll uh, our leadership team and our, our, our people in it. And look, I'm really proud of where we are. We just got recognized as the, uh, Home Furnishings Retailer of the Year. Super humbled and proud of our memory makers and that achievement. I think it's a phenomenal achievement. But what, what if we just rested there? Like we would then start to drift. We would no longer pursue something meaningful. So now we've got to challenge ourselves with where do we go from here? And 
yeah, that creates a little bit of stress, but like not stress that we can't go get. Like we've still got to have a growth mindset and we still got to challenge ourselves to say, what is our potential and have we just arrived at our potential? Are we content at that? Because I think, you know, I think if you've, if you've got this contentment mindset that you, you then might start to like falter and go back or not maintain or not tap into the potential. And sometimes the pursuit of life is having, you know, the joy comes in having something to look forward to and, and achieving and achieving together as a team. And so on the next episode, uh, since we're in this, uh, Olympic season, you know, I thought I might give you guys a little message on, uh, this topic of, uh, an Olympic mindset. So that's what's going to come next. Thanks so much for listening to this solo episode in the summer series here from Stories from the River. And let us know what you like, what you didn't like. Uh, be kind, if you would. Um, uh, and so, listen, I'm stepping out here being a little bit vulnerable. Uh, I'd rather be interviewing someone and putting the spotlight on them. And uh, But anyways, we need to get content produced because our standard now has become two episodes per week. So that's the standard to produce a high quality uh, podcast. And, and so that's what it's got to be. So the show must go on. Thank you guys so much for listening in. We, we, we've got some loyal listeners and hopefully you can set a goal that's super meaningful for you and a standard that you can hold yourself accountable to. Hey, text me, email me, let me know uh, what your thoughts and ideas are. I love to kind of get in these text chains with folks and go back and forth because I drive energy from that as well. And so I wish you all the best. Wish you all well. Thanks for listening in. Come back Thursday for the talk on Olympic Mindset and uh, like, mash that subscribe button, Apple, Spotify, or on YouTube. And uh, we appreciate all the feedback. Feedback is a gift. And I'll see you next time here on Stories from the River. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Stories from the River. To check out more episodes, visit storiesfromtheriver.com. Join us again next week. And remember to like, rate, and subscribe to the podcast.